So hi everybody, welcome. And um, sorry for a bit, bit delay, but um, you know we're we're heading now off, and uh, but we'll keep things strict in uh, in time. We're going to talk about IoT market today and tomorrow. So the new opportunities and challenges, and how our IoT players are addressing the demand for the global IoT connectivity. A mouthful. Anyway, I would like to um, um, uh, welcome you, the guest here in the in the audience. So thank you for 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 coming. I want to thank the people now here on uh, you know on the live streaming. So welcome to the to the session, and of course, uh, and I'll give them um, a minute to to introduce themselves. My uh, my panelists. My name is Eric, and um, I hope you will stay with us for the coming forty five minutes for and hopefully a nice interactive um, session about IoT. So whenever you're playing Snake, stop that and um, and listen to us. So thank you so much. So. Um, Quickly, I'll give a um, uh, word, Edwin, if you want to quickly start. Thank you. Yeah, my name is uh, Edwin van Nieland, uh, the CEO of uh, iBasis, the voice and mobile data part. Uh, I think already 25 years in the industry in the same company. So uh, there's a long traditional history. And uh, let's say ready for the new excitement on IoT and later on messaging. Thank you so much, Edwin. Angelo? Okay, my name is Angelo Paiva. I have also 20 years in that industry, also in the same company. Okay. Um, I'm uh, the, the sales director for the international connectivity with Telecol. Uh, Telecol is a full MVNO and MVNE in Brazil. Okay, thank you. And as I said, my name is Eric. I'm since two months in the industry. <laughs> and uh, That's you lost your hair. Thank you. Already in two months. Thank you so much. You know, you see? He's taken, you know, he's getting back on me, right? Anyway, long time in the industry. There you go. Uh, it. <laughs> thank you so much, Eugene. Okay, um, guys, IoT, and and um, first on the on 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 the player side, and later on we move a bit more in the uh, on on the connectivity. So, um, Edwin, from your point of view, give us an overview of the, of the IoT landscape. I mean, um, uh, what are we talking about? What is the current status, for instance, as well on the on the global IoT uh, connectivity? What do you see? Yeah, what what do we see? Um, let's say eighty percent, let's say, of the IoT business is still in the hands of the MNOs, and and only twenty percent is in the hands of the MVNOs, MVNAs, and and other parties. So there is still a lot of work to do, whereby you see that MNOs are very protective of, let's say what can be done and what cannot be done on their network, especially on the device management side. Uh, it's, uh, they have very uh, rigid, uh, let's say, criteria to allow um, uh, devices on their networks. And by doing that, they, they they control, let's say, the autonomously of the MVNO and they make or the, M, uh, the MNO. Um, for parties like iBasis, uh, it's not easy, let's say, to, to, yeah, to create a significant footprint. Uh, we have been working on IoT, also thanks to our CTO uh, AJ Joseph already for six years. But uh, to lift it off is 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 a challenge. At the same time, we were the first one to get, uh, let's say, the permanent roaming agreements uh, with uh, with Verizon, which was quite uh, unique. Uh, I still remember a nice meeting in in New York whereby ten people were meeting each other in front of the building uh, from Verizon shaking hands and AJ was giving them a lecture about IoT at that time. Uh, and that resulted in a, in a good relationship. But it is difficult. Let's say the 20% uh, should be 30, 40% at least. And m and should be open, let's say, to more creativity to manage the business going forward. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree with Edwin. Um, we are from Venezuela in Brazil. Okay, we we uh, Brazil is one of the few countries in the world also that uh, the permanent roaming is not allowed. Um, so we serve internationally to to accomplish that. They want to to go to Brazil and have like a, a local EMC. Yeah, and uh, the relationship between them and all and them Vianos is always a challenge. Yeah, I think uh, we could uh, achieve in Brazil like uh, a kind of a relationship where where Vivo we we run under the Vivo network. Where Vivo sees us as, as a partner, okay, uh, uh, they don't uh, let's say act directly on let's say on the NBI or NBI IoT uh, environment, and uh, they gave us let's say the chance to go after that, yeah, with the 5G and the private networks. 
and I also see uh, like a lot of opportunities for the MVNOs. Like uh, in Brazil, the MVNO penetration is less than two percent. In a continental country like Brazil, like uh, we have a lot of chances. Yeah, uh, we are more agile. We can be more creative. We can uh, go to the market in a better way. And we have already, let's say, a few successful uh, cases on the IoT side uh, in Brazil. Well, that's good news, challenging news. I mean, uh, from from a helicopter view, what, what, what what's going on? Um, okay, you were talking about MNLs. So, uh, is that the new revenue stream for 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 the MNLs? Are they? Is that one of the reasons they are holding on to it so much? Is what, what, what? How how should we see that, uh, Edwin? Uh, no, definitely, IoT is one of the potential new revenue generators going forward, and and that's applicable for the MNOs, but also for all the parties, let's say in that ecosystem. And the ecosystem of IoT is is quite complex. Uh, you deal with uh, IoT devices, which can be a car, can be an automotive thing, can be a large thing, can be a small thing. You deal with SIMs, you deal with a network, you deal with applications, you deal with security. So the complexity, the complexity and the interoperability of all those components in the IoT ecosystems are complex. Are the MNOs equipped to deal with that? That's a big question. I'm not going to answer that, but I, I do have my questions about that. Let's say our parties, which are more specific in a certain area, specialized to bring value, uh, definitely there is an, um, let's say there is a unique opportunity. That's also what we identified. Um, yes. So the MNOs are protective, which is not strange. Uh, perhaps they should become more creative to offer good solutions to the market. Um, and not only on volume based commitments, eh, because that's what you see now that we all want uh, to have volume based commitments. Uh, to have a predictability on the on the accessibility and the usage of the network, um, yeah, and that is, is that, that is still, still sustainable. Um, it's so protective. It is protective and, because we and, talk about what is it, ten years about IoT now, right? And they need so, to be, they need to become more creative. But you have many other examples as well where the creativity for a traditional MNO is not there. They want to keep the ARPU from the existing customers as high as possible. Understandable. So why should they invest in CPaaS? Why should they invest in all kinds of adjacent businesses and open, let's say, uh, or share a part of the pie with other parties? It, it is also a form of protectionism. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. In Latam, for you? Same things? Yeah. Um... I think uh, the relationship with them and us um, is always like a, not an easy one, you know, like a, it's family, you know, like sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not uh, up and down. Uh, but uh, what, I, what we see, that's how we are positioning ourselves, trying not to, let's say, uh, step on the you know, toes, you know, like uh, it's, it's being like an MVNE and, uh, and, and, and staying on the connective side. Uh, you know, we, we want to allow our MVNOs to to go after you know the the vendors, the devices, the, the, the on, a, on a different layer, like for them to do that job. And in, in our case, we are the provider of the connectivity, providing them like uh, the connect the, the platform for them to to manage the connectivity and 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 get let's say a niche in the market where the MNO see us as a partner. Okay, and I think I think. Uh, uh, I, you know, we, we launched them, you know, in 2019, uh, we are in 2023. And, uh, I would say that, uh, after many years of discussions back and forth, like this year, we, we, we could find like a fine tuning on, you know, they, where they can see us as a real partner that we are, let's say, aggregating value in a point that sometimes, uh, depending on the customer, depending on the situation, they also recommend us uh to the customer okay and uh i think it's not the case here in the us as as i see and as i study but it, but in in brazil there are certain areas also that the mnos they they are not there they are not to, uh, they were not able to cover the entire country and uh so they see the, the mvnos like a creating like a, the environment of the private uh, network together with the 
the public networks as as an asset for them and uh, and bringing you know revenues for them that they maybe would not be able to get into. You know, so uh, it's not that uh, it's a done deal and let's just enjoy, but <laughs> you know we have to to build that. Okay, and uh, we see them more more open. I think the competition also uh, in the case of Brazil, um, it's very tough. And uh, and let's say uh, uh, the the MVNO that we are running under Vivo, they they see us like as like okay, let's use the, them to 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 compete against the others that maybe they already like doing a job on the other side as well, you know. And the uh, the creative part, like uh, on what they are going to do, I think uh, I don't see that changing much on their side. At least I don't see any any side. Any, any sign of that I see them uh, much more becoming like a like a boss like okay what is the forecast you know like how, how, how much are you going to sell how much are you going to sell more you know like, that's how I see okay, thank you um, so Edwin um, to build the ecosystem eh, to, 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 and, and to make sure we, 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 we serve the true uh, digital transformation because I mean IoT is part of it um and especially one of the pillars um is 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 that going i mean beyond the optimization needs uh, from the iot I, as i as i just described uh, the ecosystem is quite complex and let's say that that vertical on itself is is quite unique and gives endless opportunities for business people in that ecosystem um i don't think that parties should have the intention to control all the elements in that ecosystem. Let security be handled by the security expert. Let the applications be handled by the application expert. The big challenge is how do you achieve the interoperability between all those different components and how do you make it one system, let's say, uh, and do you generate a, a profitable revenue going forward? Um, I think initially everybody thought it's a done deal. It's easy. Eh? IoT was separated in many companies. It was uh, highly valued. Eh? The the multiple was uh, uh, going Maybe through the roof. Maybe overvalued a um, little bit. Perhaps overvalued. Now people see the complexity and the logistic challenges they are facing in in the rollout scenarios. Um, um, sometimes a shortage of SIMs. Sometimes. Uh, let's say the 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 permanent permanent uh, data roaming component and challenge. Um, let's say the um, uh, certificates to get devices approved to make it more stringent. So the reality is now slightly different from five six years ago, mm -hmm. and now we know more. And now we are struggling. Okay, how do we, let's say, overcome that hurdle? Let's say to set to put it back on track. Let's say that way. Okay. Okay. Anything to add on that one, Angela? No, uh, uh, I think the interoperability is a big challenge uh, in, in, let's say, on the on the verticals, on the on the system device, as you said. And uh, I we had a situation like in March this year that a big customer came and say, "Hey, I have a business case for Brazil. I, I need for yesterday the, the the interconnection." And then they worked very quick on the on the commercial part, which is not usual also on that business. But uh, we are still not. We didn't start the integration yet. Like, uh, and, and he said, "Man, it's a priority. I have like I have one case here, and uh, I, it seems that the entire ecosystem is overloaded. Okay, which, which let's say, is a good problem. It means that there is so much business going on. Like, uh, on a positive way to see that that uh, nobody is able to handle all the amount of." Uh, uh, Let's say uh, uh, interconnections that have developed, and then you have what Edwin said, like a, a lot of challenges. Yeah, like sometimes you say, "Hey, we have this model to do the the integration," and everybody agrees, and uh, you face challenges. Then you have to speak to to our vendors. It takes time. So um, I think we have kind of a good problem in our hands because the, I see the world driving to that direction. Okay, and uh, we are the ones here to try to to build the puzzle to make it work. Okay, uh, a, a positive problem. Okay, Edwin, thank you. Um, we have a question from the audience, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for your insights. Um, the question I have really is, uh, you, Edwin talked about 80, 20%. Um, 
for companies such as uh, iBases and companies such as Telecall, what is really uh, your addressable market? Because uh, IoT in general, as words as the market says, is booming. Uh, access to uh, devices, uh, billions are being added every year. There's tremendous numbers everywhere. So, so the business is growing. The question is, what is the addressable market? for companies such as iBasis and Telecom in this sector? Okay. I think it's a good question. Uh, let's say five, six years ago, when everybody spoke about IoT, which was just a rephrasing of the word machine to machine at that time, um, everybody thought, okay, we continue as is, and we see a significant new market. Nowadays, I can tell you for iBasis, stick to the core, stick to where you're good at, and keep focus on what we're doing. To give you an example, we use now, let's say the 5G, 5G um, let's say private networks in combination with the IoT solutions, let's say to, um, to get access to rural areas where you get access to mines, um, let's say uh, aircraft shelters and all kind of uh, difficult to reach locations. Uh, in addition, for instance, and that's also what I said yesterday, fixed wireless access where you use 5G in combination with an eSIM, let's say because it's just cheaper than to dig into the ground and lay fiber optics, uh, it is then a combination together with an MNO and your IoT solution, which is not an IoT solution, but is a fire, fire, uh, uh, fixed wireless access solution. Um, yeah, we call it IoT. It's not really IoT. It is just an, an expansion from your technology you have close to your own uh, capabilities. So let's say we refocus completely with, with, let's say, our IoT strategy going forward and keep it closer to, let's say, the role we are playing as a wholesaler worldwide instead of stepping into a world whereby you say, okay, the distribution channels with the new de devices, we did that. Eh? We were quite successful in the beginning. But then we see that the device manufacturers are struggling with accessing their market. Uh, and getting sufficient uh, coverage as such. So it is still an evolving market and there is nobody 100% in control except for a few operators who have, let's say, yeah, deep pockets, deep money, and they can uh, invest a lot in that. So what from your point of view, gentlemen, could, could and please jump in, uh, audience. Um, where do you think, you know, I wouldn't immediately ask for the solutions because we would <laughs> we would have solved it yesterday. But what is the road to 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 move on to? What what should we do? I mean, you you pinpoint already by saying, listen, you know, shoemaker just make shoes, butcher just make sure that you do the meat, and so tell us. Part partnerships are in inevitable in this in this entire arena, and let's face the reality: MNOs. Stick to your own customers and to your own network. We can handle the rest. Of course, that is a sort of arrogancy which is not always uh, appreciated in, in that domain because they want to demonstrate that they can do better as well. The reality is different. And that's that's the fact. So uh, we partner with Verizon uh, for fixed wireless access in the US. And um, let's say that that is fantastic. And that's we don't see any competition, and now we see it as an extension on the IoT options going forward. And I think that can happen in multiple more uh, situations. So partnering is one of them. Yeah. Angel. Very very challenging your your question. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, no. I was thinking. Uh, okay. In our side, okay, uh, we um, what we try to say is that we try to adapt, okay. Like uh, it is a big challenge. We have our like a, let's say when we make a technical proposition, say hey, we we look on this way, but then you always expect okay, but I would like to change this, or change that, or or do this or do that, and you know we we have to be able to adapt, okay. Uh, every integration is a is a new story. Like uh, we we could. You know, speed up and and work in our internal process. You know, to create a better inter interoperability with you know our customers, uh, creating APIs, uh, which is our biggest goal. Like uh, you know, to to provide like an API for the customer with everything integrated. Okay, 
uh, in the chain, like uh, with the, the, the devices and the, the, the verticals, uh, we are not going to step into that. Okay, we are, we are staying on the connectivity layer. Uh, and we expect that, let's say, our MVNOs, they, they do that job, you know, like the, the certificate the devices to, to deal with them, to talk to them. is endless. Okay, like, uh, you know, I know that in the US, probably have a lot of challenges with Verizon, you know, like everybody, people that want to buy, but then you say, hey, is your device certificated by, by Verizon already? Okay, it, it's a challenge. Uh, and we try to organize, we try to fit and, and, and keep the customer. That That's our idea. In addition to that, I think if partnering is not possible, then at least consolidation will take place. Let's say whereby certain elements close to each other Let's say uh, we'll see that one plus one is three, and that that will bring the ecosystem more together. Okay, yeah, I I think so too. I think that will be actually inevitable to make the next steps to go, um, uh, and, and you know, a bit forward. I, I think when uh, let's say uh, like the example that we give of of uh, SoftBank, let's say the big big guys, big groups that they have money and they, and they look the value in the chain on, on where to buy and, and aggregate and put together, they are going to see these kind of consolidations that uh, sometimes going to be a surprise for us, but they're going to see, as I said, like, okay, they're going to see that's going to pay the bill on the other month. It makes sense. The consolidation. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, SoftBank again uh, hit uh, the first thing and, uh, you know, somebody has to take the lead, right? on the consolidation side. Um, all right, data privacy. How are the IoT players addressing the issue of data privacy in the global IoT connectivity? Angela, good luck. <laughs> Careful. Yeah, that that was, uh, I, I, I asked for help to answer that question. When I saw that question, I, I called internally, but, uh, you uh, you have some technical things like encapsulation that we can do to keep, let's say, on a on a private way. And usually the service is made, let's say, by one side to the other side. Yeah, so uh, you you can keep it. Um, let, let me help you. Okay, help me. But th that's how I see. It. <laughs> now, first of all, we have the GSMA with the IoT safe, um, let's say, specs and and that. Let's say that is at least a good start, uh, let's say, to protect, um, let's say, all the elements um, in, in the uh, global IoT connectivity. Let's say the adaption of that spec is number two. Yes. And let's say the incorporation of that spec uh, in the DNA, in the veins of every company is step number three. So say stating that IoT safe is the solution, I'm not going to say that, but at least it's a start let's say, to bring, um, let's say, that protection and security level to cover all the elements in the IoT environment. Where do we see any challenges? Furthermore, than, than just, okay, we're going step by step by step by step. Yeah. Provides that, yeah. Yeah, that, uh, that, yeah that's, an, that's a challenge also. That's one. Yeah. Uh, let's say we have the tendency to make life sometimes more complex than easier. <laughs> if you look at GDPR in Europe and okay. uh, or you see, look at DMA in Europe and then being adopted in the US, let's say every time it's a cat and mouse game. So we come with a solution. We come with, let's say, something creative and then automatically either the regulator or another uh, authority will come up with a new plan. Okay, that will remain. Let them work. Let we do our work. Fine. Fine. I can deal with that. Yeah. No, okay. All right, guys, moving on. Um, um, Edwin, what de developments do you see um, uh, in the agile and integrated service offering we, we see around us? And, and, and how do we provide new solutions to evolve, mm -hmm. let's say, the, the, at the end of the day, the enterprise customer? I, I gave that answer already. No. Eh? But, but I, I want to go in there. I'll do it again. I'll, I'll do it I again. I want to go in I'll there. I'll do it again. Um, I think the combination with 5G is an example. 5G and IoT can, let's say, uh, bring a more cost-effective solutions for rural areas where we cannot bring fiber optic to the home. And that, that's, a, that's a done deal. Uh, you can translate that to fixed wireless access. You can make that um, uh, uh, 
also different. Uh, 5G private networks in combinations with IoT, let's say to uh, enable and let's say to bring communication in areas where there is no coverage, like mines, eh, like shelters, like uh, bunkers, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. That's another uh, technical solution. These are the solution close to let's say the DNA of a company like iBasis, and that's where we can bring additional value. Uh, but you can most likely think of many other uh, creative um, uh, combinations as such. But, but but isn't it true that, that I mean, we talk about 5G as if the whole world has 5G, which is not the case, we know. No. Some places not even 2.5G, right? Talking about Africa. So where is the role of, let's say, the MNO to fulfill, let's say, that part of the connectivity or the LEO satellites or, you know, uh, the uh, the CBRS spectrum in mean, 3.5G is still, let's say, the instrument to do that. And that is where they should put the focus upon, let's say. And that is also where parties are now, let's say, abandoning the 2G and 3G licenses to, let's say, enable and keep the 3.5G gigahertz, let's say, for these kind of purposes. Let's say satellite is, an, is a new opportunity as well. Let's say I didn't make a deep dive in that one, but you can definitely think about solutions in that area as well. Well, the cost aspect plays yeah. a big role, uh, big big role actually uh, there as well. Anything to add on that one, or Angelo? Yeah, we are, we are more or less on the on the same way in Brazil. Like uh, going to areas where you don't have any coverage, and you you provide that there together, like the, the, the private, you know, five G, like the fixed wireless uh, the, with the public network, and provide coverage, as I mentioned before, like a creating like a, a portal for the customer to have, let's say, full access and, uh, you know, manage the entire connectivity from there. And uh, that that's how we see like the, the, the future coming with an API as well. That's it. Okay. So already bridging a little bit to, 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 to the end of the, of, of the session and then scoping a bit the future. I mean, we talked about, let's say, the huge amount of challenges we have. One of the solutions could be, you know, make sure you, you, you find the right partner or the, actually the right partners, but every part in not only within the ecosystem, but also, let's say, in the sub-matter expertise. That's, I think, that, that that we can conclude. Right, Edwin? That's probably what we said, right? Right. You, you, you need to make sure that you do what you're good at. Make sure you get the right partners around you who are good in their, you know, specific expertise. So I think that, that that's one thing. So scoping a bit a bit the future, and Edwin, if I may, may start with you on on your let's say, um, um a closing statement for 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 this session, and then I'll give the word to to Angelo. Um, what are we will we see in the future from your point of view, from my basis point of view? What's there maybe to expect? I mean, nobody has, especially not an IoT, the glass bowl prediction ready on paper and. Uh, you know, to hand out. No. But uh, what do you think that we will encounter? Um, let's say there are several, let's say, angles where you can approach this. I, as I mentioned, consolidation will happen and that can bring a solution. If you look at the IoT profile and compare that with, a, with the average ARPU of a user, then you will see that for an MNO, the IoT revenue doesn't fit in their EBITDA profile at all. Um, so carving out an IoT business from an MNO and and put it aside and make it spe specific would definitely help. Let's say the strategic decisions in an MNO going forward. Mm -hmm. um, Do they that see that the MNOs? <laughs> of course, I I don't know if they see it. That but they I think they know they it. Are so, they know it, but they are going to deny that question. Yeah, exactly. They're not got, going to answer that question. No. Yeah. As long as they bring, let's say, high-end and low-end solutions to the market, whereby a different, let's say, a bandwidth of ARPU is defined and not volume-based, let's say, criteria are defined, then let's say there will be there there will be a complete new uh, arena and and possibilities going forward. Again, but that that's a mindset change. For me, it's easy, yeah, let's say, to scream and yell that uh, as a wholesaler. Um, We're good but, at that, by the way. But let's say with my IoT experience from five, six years, I see definitely, let's say, still the endless opportunities because they are there. But we need to find the right ones and we need better cooperation from the MNOs. And I'm not going to say that they do not give the cooperation. Definitely they do. And we piggyback on all the profiles from um, 
KPN, SFR, Mio, uh, Verizon, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a huge support. And they see that as well. But uh, the business model needs to change. All right. Angelo, your famous last words. Yeah, no, I, I agree with what you're doing. Like, uh, it's going to be like uh, always a challenge to make them and all to look with the same view as us as them via no. Uh, how do we go to the market? Like, uh, and and how we are also building our own strategy and uh, to be able to invest and pay the bills. Okay, on their side, uh, is I think it, uh, something has to change. Maybe like a, a personal thing from like a, a high executive to change their mindset to to make that change that you spoke, because for them they are very comfortable, you know, to be there. <laughs> asking for more and uh, let's say at the end they are the owners of the network okay uh, we we are not going to invest in build yeah like an entire uh, mobile network uh, so th that's how i see and uh, it's going to be like a day-to-day -day negotiation like i have to visit them talk to them and, and see on the other side if there is any kind of uh, enlightenment like uh, that where they're going to to look with a better scope and uh, uh, we we had a lot of improvements uh, with our uh, business uh, relationships in Brazil with them. Uh, we have some corporations, uh, but uh, they it's like, uh, you know, they, they allow you to go, then they, they break you, and uh, that that's how it is. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you just mentioned that they that the mobile operators, are the MNOs are quite comfortable. You know, I remember your one thing. A couple of years ago, there came some OTTs around, you know, and that struck them by lightning. So, you know what, I think, and, and I think a lesson is learned there, especially on the, you know, the, the old, let's say, incumbent mobile operators and, and, and even the, 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 the old incumbents. And then it was like, hey, what the hell is going on? You know what? Think twice. Open up, partner up, you know, make sure that, 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 that you do this in a smart and clever way. And and um, because you know what, sometimes when the rain comes, there might be some lightning, and if you if you don't see that coming, watch it. But especially, I think absolutely, um, I agree with you, uh, gentlemen. That I mean, we know that that the opportunities are sort of endless, um, but we need to get it together, together, right? And with that, do you have any questions? Did you learn anything? They're so they're so silent, so quiet. Was it interesting for you? Let me make it more easy on you. Thank you so much, we, because we do it for you. And with that, I would like to, um, before I end actually this session, I want to remind you that in 15 minutes, we have another session sponsored by iBasis, talking about the messaging ecosystem, the latest market trends, what's going on. So if you're interested, and I would urge you, more to invite you actually to come and uh, stay so in 50 minutes we'll, we'll go on with the late with the, with the last panel session we have an absolute very interesting presentation on the latest market trends from uh, from edwin so we're curious and um so with that thank you for joining us thank you um on the live stream bye from uh sunny <clears throat> no rainy miami but um th thank you for staying with us and i hope to see you in uh, 15 minutes Thank you.